Hey, Two Sun Tuesday, and I have a fairly new-ish kind of one here. This is the TS340. This is a Jelly Jerry design. If it has a name, I'm not familiar with it at this point. Um, yeah, I, I'm not actually uh, quite sure. Uh, so I won't really refer to it as a particular name, but uh, maybe I'll check with... Uh, him afterwards about that but this one came out i don't know at the time of recording here uh probably a couple of months or so ago and uh something that's uh, kind of nice about it is that it's in 14c 28n nice stone wash and uh that's kind of refreshing because of just basically almost everything coming out of uh, tucson is using d2 at the moment so it's nice to uh see that this one was probably designed and agreed upon early enough on that they probably still had enough uh, stock of 14C to uh, promise this one in that particular steel. Uh, something that's uh, a little interesting about it is uh, the blade stock thickness on this is a, a little bit less than uh, what they do on a lot of their knives. It's 3.4 millimeters, whereas uh, Tucson's average for most of their designs is uh, 3.8 that seems to be right around the average. Um, and they can go a little bit thicker at 4 or 5.1, but that was one specific knife <laughs> that uh, Night Morning did recently. But this one is uh, very, very strange. Uh, you can see we got this uh, crazy curve kind of going on here. Kind of reminds me a bit of like a very, very large version of the uh, the TDI knife um, that K-Bar makes. Uh I think it's usually designed for uh, police officers and, uh, you know, other armed enforcement sort of thing to uh, carry on their offhand. Um, usually, you know, in cases of a dire emergency and or if someone is um, uh, attempting to apprehend your firearm on your uh, normal side, then you can use that on the off side to uh, pull that out of your pocket and uh, damage their hands so they can't... Uh, you know, either get a hold of the uh, the firearm or prevent them from actually using it if they have taken it. So this is uh, obviously much longer than any of those guys are, and of course the TDIs also uh, do curve down a little bit more, so they're much more aggressive uh, kind of curve to them. This one uh, to me reminds me of kind of like having a pistol grip sort of thing on there. Uh, that makes it really comfortable for it to uh, sit in the palm of your hand if you are doing any kind of uh, thrusting, poking kind of uh, maneuvers with it. Uh, it catches nicely in the palm of your hand there. No uh, uncomfortable feelings going on there, so that's great. The uh, tip on this thing is um, comes down to a pretty nice fine point. It's not going to be super delicate because 14C28 is pretty tough steel, so... Uh, I don't really have any worries there. And we also have jimping in a couple of places. We got it up there, of course. But uh, we also have one for your index finger in case you want to um, do a little bit more detailed work up towards the tip. And, uh, you know, from time to time, people don't uh, tend to like to use the, uh, the pinch grip. So that works in the same way right there. We do have a finger choil there, uh, as usual. Uh, Jelly Jerry is uh, not rocking these ridiculous mitts. So, you know, the, uh, the finger choil there a little bit bigger than, uh, some other designers for Tucson end up doing like night morning, but, uh, still maybe on a, a little bit of the smaller side for what I would personally find comfortable, but Hey, you got normal size hands. You're not going to have any problems there whatsoever. The, uh, the geometry on this guy, it's, it comes down very, very, very thin. I've, of course, uh, reprofiled this to uh, 17 degrees behind the edge, and it still feels super nice and thin behind the edge there. Of course, uh, uh, if you're familiar with a lot of sharpening, if you do end up um, pulling the, uh, the profile of the, uh, the blade geometry there at the, uh, the tip back a little bit, that, uh, that does basically thin it out at that secondary bevel, but it will make it thicker right behind that edge. That's just kind of... The nature of, uh, you know, the triangular sort of thing that the blade's got going on there. So. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that, that really makes this thing have some nice slicing characteristics to it. So it works great for the, uh, the saber kind of grip there. Um, 
my thumb uh, kind of lands in the back there. That's kind of that uh, little flipper tab landing pad area. I feel comfortable there, but you can uh, choke up a little bit more, um, and that's also all right. But that does seem to make me have to adjust my hand after I've uh, grabbed it. Uh, so it's probably a little bit more designed for you to actually use that finger choil with. And that works out all right. Pinch grip also works great. Uh, you are a little bit far away from the edge there. So if you are looking for a whole bunch of uh, power, maybe the pinch grip is probably not going to be the, uh, the one for you. However, with this uh, curve here, uh, the reverse grip, um, this part of the handle and the front part is just going to end up kind of getting on you. So maybe not the most comfortable for doing that. Sometimes I'll do that if I'm uh, most of the way through, um, you know, a cut of uh, uh, cardboard, cardstock or something like that. I will flip it over and kind of pull it up from the back. And this one's not exactly the most comfortable for that. I don't really have any points or anything going on on the back there. But, uh, yeah, it's just doesn't quite feel secure as the other grips for me. But, hey, there you go. Yep, the action on this thing, quite nice. It's a, it's a wiggle shut. It's not going to be a, a super crazy drop shut there. But uh, that probably also has a little bit to, to do with the fact that this has a, a, a thinner um, blade stock thickness than some of the other ones out there. And the blade is nice and buried in there. You can't really get to that. So fully safe there. We don't have any snaggle teeth or anything like that. This one was uh, one of the first uh, runs here. So the uh, the titanium was anodized gold. I don't know. It was probably uh, one of the, the really low voltage ones. Probably, I don't know, between 15 and 18 volts or something like that to uh, get that kind of palish kind of thing there but looks pretty darn good uh, almost looks a little bit antiqued now that it's got just a little bit of a patina from uh use and all that sort of stuff going on there um they also did release these things with purple um and that uh, anodization is also basically the uh you know the inside there uh the backspacer and the pocket clip so uh the purple is a little bit more obvious so if you're not looking for something super flamboyant they at least have this one here for you. <laughs> and we have uh, basically twill carbon fiber there with uh, you know, a little bit of contouring on the top and bottom to match. Works out pretty darn well. And uh, I do like this back spacer here. It's got a nice area for your lanyards without having uh, too much kind of troubles there. The pocket clip, uh, at least on mine, fairly stiff out of the box. Um, we have two mounting points for it uh, into carbon fiber. So yeah, I mean, that's that's uh, gonna be rock solid. It's not going to uh, end up having any sort of problems in the future with any of that sort of stuff. And we do have that hole uh, up in the top there. I think most of that is just going to be for aesthetics. It's a little bit too close to the pivot there to really get much in the way of leverage to get over to that uh, that detent there but you can easily uh with the groove there on the back afterwards uh do that reverse flick so that works out all right and of course it does have a nice flipper tab there that doesn't stick out past the uh the curve of the handle by much it does a little bit but there you go and relatively uh subdued for the amount of uh pocket clip and uh the rest of the knife that'll actually be shown there so yeah that's a lot of uh what i wanted to end up covering on this guy here basically what you would end up calling a bolster lock so it, it's thicker but it is still basically the titanium liners on there we don't have any um extra weight relieving going on on the inside there but that is because we've uh channeled out the top well, i say we've since they've channeled out the top for these uh carbon fiber uh inlays that's the word i'm looking for and let's see i don't remember off the top of my head okay so we do um the screws up here at the top are actually a T6, and they basically just 
hold the uh, the scale onto the inlay there. Uh, but the other two here uh, are T8s. And that's because they're actually hardware that's attaching both sides rather than just attaching that. I don't necessarily know why they wanted to uh, swap that out a little bit, but uh, they did. This is one of the, the few that also uses T6 on the... Um, on the pocket clips, uh, there's not a whole lot of them out there. Most of them use T8s, but uh, for this one, yeah, I don't really have uh, an opinion one way or the other. I would probably prefer it to have T8s, but uh, you know, if they couldn't get a particular size or length or something like that, then uh, you know, I can understand that. So, now that I've uh, talked about that a little bit, uh, talk about uh, some other stats here, and then I'll do some uh, size comparisons. So we've got a 3.61 inch knife, so not a little tiny short thing here. That's uh, 91.7 millimeters for y'all. And uh, as far as the thickness here, we got 0 0.53 of an inch, or 13.5 millimeters. So uh, just a little bit thicker than a, uh, a Spyderco PM2. Speaking of, I might as well uh, pull that out. And this is a kind of a large knife, so sure, I'll go ahead and pull out the uh, Manix 2 XL. It is a, uh, a large beast, so yeah, there you go with those. Sticking with Spyderco, sure, let's go ahead and go with the Endura. Hey, that's actually fairly similar in a lot of sizes there, so that's cool. All right, oh, Benchmade. How about if we uh, pull that out there? There's the, uh, the 940. I do have, oh, here we are. I do have the, uh, the bug out. Obviously, it's going to be larger than the bug out. <laughs> But, hey, it is certainly something that uh, a ton of people have ended up buying over the years. So it seems fairly relatively useful for that. Uh, since this is a bigger knife, let's go with the uh, Ontario Rat Number 1. Seems to be uh, pretty similar in uh, sizes there. And sure, why not? We got the, uh, the K-Bar Dozier Folding Hunter. All right. So I think I have basically covered everything that uh, I wanted to here. Oh yeah, we have uh, pivot collars on here, uh, and they are titanium, but they're not anodized. So hey, if you want to make those look a different color or something like that, just as an offset, yeah, it's certainly uh, possible there. All right. So with that being said, that's the uh, the standard review. So um, if that's what you were interested in. Appreciate y'all for stopping by. You know, like, comment, and subscribe if you appreciate what I'm doing. For the rest of us, though, uh, I'm going to go ahead and ignore the rest of that uh, YouTube crap and uh, go ahead and go into the uh, disassembly here so we can see what's going on on the inside. So I shall close the knife just to make things a little bit safer for me. And i got to start out with the uh, T6 rather than the T8 bit there because that goes into... That little uh, some bitch. Excuse my language if that's not something that you prefer. I just feeling a little froggish tonight. <laughs> All right, and pops right open. And yeah, here we are on the inside. Not anything super spectacular to see. Yep. That's it. We got their standard um, ceramic sort of things there. We do have a, a fairly large uh, stop pin, but it's not internal to the blade. Some people might have a little bit more um, uh, more of an opinion on that uh, than I particularly do. Doesn't seem to bother me one way or the other. I do kind of like when they are mounted to the blade just a little bit more. Uh, maybe for some structural stability, if that's going to be a problem on a design, but it can easily be mitigated. So, yeah, here we are. Let's go ahead and slap this guy back together. And we shall 
finish up with putting the, uh, the rest of the hardware on, huh? Do, do, do. Back that out. I don't really want to uh, cross-thread anything. There we are, and oh yeah, this is a T8. So, ta-da, there we are. All sorts of good. So, yeah, I don't really have any uh, closing thoughts or anything like that on this. Uh, I have thought I've been uh, rather uh, concise so far. So uh, I'll go ahead and end it there. As always, I appreciate y'all for watching. And have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. It's this guy.